video on. Okay, we're, well, the, the video feed is working. We've got a backup here. Um, sorry for the uh, technical difficulties. We had a uh, massive computer crash with our Granicus software, which brings all our, our meetings onto uh, our, the, the website. But we've got a, a backup video, and we're going live onto Channel 8. We may be online at some point. Um, but we're going to move forward. So before we, we took a break, uh, we just adjourned the executive session and now we're on item number five of our agenda, which is action on executive session items. So I will entertain a motion if there's one from the board. Okay, we got a motion from Mayor Pro... I'm oh, sorry. Motion from uh, Trustee Ryan. Yeah, why don't you make your motion? I will make motion to approve the settlement agreement and purchase and sale agreement for what is known as the Land Rover Superior property, formerly known as the Land Rover Superior property. Okay. And we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a second from Trustee Hammerly. Uh, discussion. I just noticed my microphone was off. I think Phyllis was trying to, so just for clarification I was making a motion for a settlement agreement and purchase and sale agreement for the former Land Rover Superior property any discussion I, I'd like to hear a statement if we have one okay well I was gonna read the statement after a vote I have no oh. no discussion And let's have, uh, Phyllis, can you call the roll? Hamerly? Yes. Macy's? Yes. Blish? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Skwazinski? Yes. Okay, passes unanimously. Um, before we move on to item number six, which is the consent agenda, I'm just going to read a statement. Um, the Town of Superior to purchase former Land Rover property. The Town of Superior has reached a preliminary agreement to purchase the former Land Rover property located at 1500 Colton Road. Land Rover moved their operations from the property last summer, and the town has been working since then to identify next steps for the property and to resolve legal proceedings that followed. The town has been working with the property owner to agree on terms of the purchase and to end legal proceedings. The future of this property will now be determined by the town as the board approved the purchase agreement on June 17th, 2019 for 3.85 million. Uh, following the due diligence period, the purchase will be completed in August. Financing for the purchase will come from the general fund and capital funds. There will be no increase in taxes for residents or businesses. 
We appreciate the many engaged residents who have waited patiently for the legal proceedings to resolve uh, so we can share the outcome we have been working towards over recent months. The board is exploring next steps for the property, so look for more information to be posted over the coming weeks. Please see below for the additional details about the property. In background, in February of 1998, the owners of the former Land Rover property requested that land on which they wanted to build their facility be rezoned to a regional scale zoning designation to accommodate their business. The board at that time agreed to this rezoning with a condition that if at any time Land Rover would cease to operate on the property, that it would return to its original community scale zoning designation. In July of 2018, Land Rover ceased to operate and relocated from Superior. The building was subsequently leased to a used automobile dealership, which was not an allowed use of the property per the 1998 development agreement. During this time, the town formally updated the zoning designation for the property to the community scale land designation referred to as community activity center in the Rock Creek Ranch plan development. The board's determination to rezone the property meant that any automobile oriented use of the property was no longer allowed. Litigation followed and ultimately the rezoning was not recognized by the court. As a result of this ruling, the town has been reviewing options to utilize this property within the best interests of superior residents, including both automotive and non automotive uses. The town board ultimately determined the best choice was to purchase the property to ensure the intent of the 1998 agreement was met and to transition the property to a use that provides greater value to the community. Due to ongoing litigation, the town board's discussions regarding this property were not able to occur during a regular board meeting, and this prevented any type of community engagement on this decision. The town has hired a firm to conduct building and environmental inspections prior to the closing of the sale, which is expected to take 30 to 45 days to complete. The town will also be exploring opportunities for uses for the building during this time. Okay, our next item on the agenda is uh, item number six, which is the consent agenda and trustee Lish has pulled uh, item 6A which is the adoption of resolution approving an agreement with Da Vinci Sign Systems to furnish and install the town sites. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I had a question for town staff. Um, looking at exhibit C of the agreement, uh, of the picture of the signs location at Highway 128 and McCasm Boulevard, um, based off the location of the star, uh, it's not obvious if the sign itself will be visible from people turning uh, from the eastbound lane coming from the west. Uh, we didn't have as uh, clear pictures as when we had it last time. I just right. wanted to double check that this will actually be in a placement that everybody, no matter which direction you came from, would be able to see it. Yeah, when we get outside uh, on site with this, you know, it's tough to to tell from yeah. a you know star on a map, but we will make sure that. It's visible from all travel directions. Yep. Fantastic. Yep. I just wanted to make sure before we approved it. Sure. Okay. Anything else on 6i? I'll make a motion. Okay. Uh, I move to approve Town Superior Resolution Number R-38, Series 2019, a resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Town of Superior approving an agreement with Da Vinci Sign Systems to furnish and install town monument signs. Second. Okay, we've got a motion from Trustee Lish, a second from Trustee Hammerly, and we'll need a roll call. Places? Yes. Lish? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Kwasinski? Yes. Hammerly? Yes. Okay, passes unanimously. Next on the agenda is item, item number seven, discussion and consideration of community space within the Morgan Ranch downtown Main Street development. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, on April 8th, the uh, Morgan Ranch group presented a concept plan to the board for five blocks of Main Street on down, in downtown Superior for uh, mixed use development. Um, during those discussions, um, there was, um, it was brought up that the, the board may want to see community or civic space in one of the buildings uh, as part of their mixed-use development. Specifically, the discussions result re, uh, were around Block 6 and a clubhouse that, that was going to be planned for the apartments on that block. 
which is adjacent to the plaza and maybe incorporating some civic use into that uh, building or buildings on block six. After the concept plan, Morgan Ranch Group went um, back and, and discussed it and have some interest, it seems like, on introducing some civic space into one of those buildings. But prior to submitting their FDP um, to the town for their development proposal, they wanted to meet with the board, hear your thoughts and ideas with regard to civic space, how much civic space, what type of uses, those type of things, so that they can uh, consider in, uh, incorporating those into their final FDP that they submit for um, consideration by the town. So with that, uh, Bill Jinks flew out uh, to be with us tonight, um, as well as the rest of the team uh, to present some ideas that they have, get your feedback, and have discussion. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Matt, and uh, thank you all for taking the time tonight and giving me an excuse to be in Colorado for a restful night. Uh, so, yeah, like Matt uh, described, we, we took what you said at the concept hearing or concept plan presentation. Um, <clears throat> two of the, the major comments that I heard were a desire for some structured parking um, for some public use, potentially integrated with the plan and uh, the potential for integrating civic space into that corner of the plaza in the, in the northwest corner of the plaza. Um, so we took that, we've been working with KTGY, uh, who's, who's here to, tonight to look at um, plan options. Uh, we do uh, have a plan right now that we're currently moving forward that does introduce um, one wrap style residential building on block six that does have some amount of public parking in a, in a parking structure, <clears throat> which also has a what's slated right now as a potential 9,000 square foot civic space. Um, to kind of back up for just a second, the, uh, the civic space is, is really tied back to the cost sharing agreement that RC Superior entered into with the town in 2013, um, at the same time with the original PD uh, approvals, which basically allocated $10 million of this TIF financing that downtown Superior benefits from to pay for the improvement of parks and civic space in the project. Um, we've already spent about 750,000 of that in Village Green Park. So there's a remaining somewhere around a little over $9 million to, to allocate, <clears throat> which needs to pay for parks one and two, 20% of the uh, central park south of, of the sports table and the civic space to the extent that you, that you want it. Um, so part of the discussion tonight should be around budget, I don't know where the town is um, with planning with matrix design on budgeting for parks one and two. That's an important part of this equation because if you spend $8 million on the parks, there's no money left over for the civic space. Um, the civic space that we're gonna show you as an option, again, is about 9,000 square feet and has a, a budget of somewhere between two to $3 million, depending on how much you wanna do with it, how, how nicely you wanna finish it, what you wanna put inside of it. Um, so tonight, we, we really wanna hear from you what you think of our, our plans that we'll show you um, in, in terms of the shell and the general space and the orientation. Um, also program what you want to happen in this space. Is it a library? Is it a big flex room? Um, you know, what do you want? Uh, and then three, thinking about budget. And uh, if we have any input yet on the park, I don't know if we do or not, but just continuing that, that discussion and, and thinking about where the dollars are coming from. So with that, I'm gonna pass it off to KTGY. They'll walk you through the, uh, the plans they've done, and then I think we can have kind of an open dialogue, um, questions, comments, and uh, look forward to it. What have you got to get out? <laughs> So, hello, I'm Terry Willis with K KTGY uh, in Denver. And um, when we were presenting last time, we had a, a building along a Main Street, which was a, a three-story um, uh, podium building with residential over retail. We had a clubhouse just uh, to the north of that. 
and then a, a residential building uh, just to, to the uh, well, actually, it wasn't a residential building. It was a, a swimming pool, actually, um, to the north side. And in discussions with the town and, and discussions about parking, and if we, and I think the mayor actually brought up the notion of civic space as would be appropriate where we were envisioning the clubhouse for the, for the community. Uh, after, after thinking about that, we, we looked at combining civic and, and the clubhouse into one facility that was kind of shared. But when you layer in the, the requirement for the additional requirement for parking, especially for the civic function, uh, it's been concluded that maybe the best solution is a, what we call a wrap building where there's a parking garage in the middle lined with with retail at the ground lined with, and this blue is where we're anticipating this civic function being, and then residential on, on the north side, you kind of tie it in with the, the rest of the residential in the, in the community. So this is the, the general, general location um, along the promenade and fronting, fronting the main civic space that we're creating, or main uh, public exterior space that we're creating. So looking at it from the from the public plaza, this is this is the kind of building we are imagining would be for civic space. I don't know if this is the angle I'm looking at, it's so, so foreshortened here. Um, with the notion of a let's say a workspace, a library, kind of in and out kind of uh, civic space on the ground floor, and then up a, a a grand stair, and then there's also an elevator in the building, but a grand stair to a, uh, what could be a, well, a, a terrace and pre-function area and a, um, a let's say a, a flexible room, an, an open flexible room for uh, civic events, uh, kind of a, a ballroom, if you will, overlooking the, overlooking the um, plaza. And this is a, another view of the of the same thing. And you can see it's a two story a two story building embedded within uh, an otherwise four story uh, building. And actually, because of the size of this room, we're thinking that you know maybe this is really a two story high space. So in effect, being the equivalent of three stories high as this this civic building. What it looks like in in plan, this would be the um, the, the ground floor, and and we have not articulated this plan whatsoever until we have a discussion about what the functions are of this of this civic space. We've talked about co-working, we've talked about a library, we've and I don't know what all what all what might come to mind, but but this is basically the footprint about a 4,500 square foot footprint that we're talking about connected uh, to the to the parking garage so people arriving to use the space can use the parking garage and and uh, enter into the civic space and then a, a second floor up this terrace and or up this elevator to a pre-function room that uh, is in front of an event space with a uh, pretty substantial terrace overlooking the uh, the plaza and a grand stair feeding up to it that you can imagine people are eating their lunch out on that on that stair as well uh, the primary function for this is is a second means of egress for the, for the space but it also provides some dynamics to the architecture and and how the space gets used as well and that's about all we have tonight so the, we have not we have not tried to program this for you or identify anything beyond beyond uh, that. But you can imagine this space might have a, uh, a, a kitchen in it or a warming kitchen. Um, I, I just can't imagine what all the, the functions you might uh, want to have here. But roughly, you know, approximately forty five hundred feet on each of two floors. 
Should I leave anything out, Bill? No, I think that's. And I don't think we I, have another. I think that's that's good. Um, obviously, we're you know again open to your comments on on architecture and layout and certainly programming and and budget. Um, you know, I, I think this does do a really nice job of connecting the pedestrian promenade from the park into the plaza and providing some public activity at this corner of the plaza, which is which is pretty important and, and helpful. And I, I do like what KTGY has done here with the, uh, oops, let's see, I guess I can't zoom in, with the <clears throat> grand stair on the exterior here. We've talked about potentially, you know, integrating more um, flower plots and, and planters and things to kind of soften this up, uh, potentially a, you know, a little bit more grand entrance and working on the architecture a little bit. But in general, I think the, the location of it and having this space that the town can use for public meetings or functions or whatever you want to that overlooks the plaza and feels really integrated with the project is, is a great thing. So um, I'm, I'm happy the way this is developing and I'd like to you for your comments and suggestions. And, and then again, you know, thinking about the, the budget, if this is what you, if, if this does look right to you and you think this is the right direction to be going, we need to make sure that we have minimum to probably no more than three million dollars to, to pay for this depending on what you want to put inside of it and that means making sure our park budgets don't go over uh like six ish which i'm not sure where they are at right now so comments questions bring it on Um, so I just want to say I really like having the parking garage wrapped. Um, I've seen that concept in other cities. I think it works fantastically. Um, I think it just makes it really nice where we're not staring at a parking garage, and yet the parking is central to everyone. Yeah, agreed. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> just to make sure that I'm understanding what we're looking at. So we have the first floor. The second floor basically combines into the third floor, and then the fourth floor up top we're looking at private residences yeah yeah this is residential above so the, the civic space would be this box here the everything everything in dark gray basically and which is two floors it's really got the height of three floors because you're going to have like 15 foot clear height so you, you know feel like it's a nice tall space okay and then matt question for you uh looking at the uh event at superior that was pulled together in 2016 we don't have i mean it's clearly conceptual but from a square footage standpoint, are we looking at maybe roughly half of what's in here as compared to what was envisioned in the main event? I thought it was around, um, I thought that was around 15,000 square feet. Is that right, Patrick? Um, the, the concept that you're referring to, um, I actually think that time at the board was interested in seeing the full, like up to 40,000 square oh. feet. Um, the, what you're seeing That's in that right. presentation was the second iteration of it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. and, and to be honest, we actually started throwing amenities in. It's my understanding this is this is probably closer to 10. Yep. Yeah. So um, think of that the event as kind of the full, um, you know, the full the full meal deal um, to where we were going a full four yeah, floors. Yeah. Yep. Right. Yeah. And, and again, just. Uh, um, it started much smaller yeah. and then we came up with this concept of um well let's let's take all the uses and see what that would look like in a layered effect which is you know the very conceptual going up to four floors yeah no, i appreciate it. i just wanted to mm -hmm. to make sure that the context was laid uh for the rest of the board as we talk about what's in what we've seen and what can stay and and what priorities are um just from a size perspective um <clears throat> Uh, ex from the exterior, I, I really appreciate the the grand staircase that activates the area. I think adding that uh, is is a bonus. Um, I and again, it, it's a bit hard to tell, and uh, not seeing this before right now, uh, I I think it would have been nice to see a bit more uh, space on the outside. I don't know if we can have an overhanging uh, type walkway to to allow more uh, outdoor access from the second floor. Uh, but externally, that, that's what I would appreciate it. And I'll save my interior comments until we get around the board. I have comments just around the economics, right? So let's just start with what's, what's your assumption on building per square foot, cost per square foot? Let's, let's 
That's two million divided by nine thousand. <laughs> it's only uh, two hundred and sixty-ish. Some, some, yeah. We, so we, we had. <clears throat> so we're working with CFCC, Colorado First, Colorado First Construction on on the entire project. They did run a conceptual estimate of just this Civic Center piece, um, which for what you're seeing here, assuming it's you know generally um, kind of white box finishes, so pretty pretty simple finishes, but ready to use with flooring and ceilings and walls and all that kind of thing. Um, they came up with 2.25 million to, to do that. Now, obviously, that's where I say depending on if you want to add folding partitions and furniture and all that kind of stuff, it, it can easily get up to three. But this, as shown, would be somewhere between two and three million. Yeah, my I, and I'm kind of surprised by that estimate. I mean, I think when we were on the low side. Yes, when we were looking elsewhere, and I recognize once you you know things get really expensive once you include aquatics, so it's it's hard. But even when you exclude aquatics, I think we were closer to the 350 400 per square foot so in the reason why you know i'm i'd be thrilled if you would build this for you know two and a half million dollars and give us nine thousand square feet but unfortunately we're gonna the way the the way the this is going to work is we have 10 million dollars to play with what i heard you got not play with but we have a 10 million dollars out of the out of the tiff that is dedicated towards civic space there is some uh, I'm going to use the word ambiguity, not from a legal term, but from an interpretive term around um, how much of that 10 million is for brick and mortar, how much of that 10 million is for parks, how much there's, you know, things move very quickly and there's, there's exhibits that say illustrative and we all know the, the history there. But ultimately, if we spend, you know, your 750,000 in on the 10 million, did I hear that right? For Central yeah. Park? No, for Village Green. I'm sorry, built. Village Green. That's right. Um, and those are round numbers, somewhere right around there. All right, so in Parks right. 1 and 2, um, we also have the design. <coughs> is the design of Parks 1 and 2 out of the 10 million, or is that excluded from the 10 million? That's, that's ours. So that's excluded. But the build-out of 1 and 2, which could be anywhere between or in a much larger number um, is the responsibility of the town out of hopefully out of the 10 million that's right it's a, it's yeah it's, it's it's i would say the responsibility of rc superior out of the 10 million it's, it's part of the 10 million that rc superior allocated to the town as, as part of that cost sharing agreement right. which is it's, it's in section 16 if anybody wants to go ahead do their homework on sec right. section 16 of the cost sharing agreement is the section that talks about the this 10 million dollars and how it's spent and allocated so which is going to come first in your if you were estimating since parks one and two are going to be challenging because we don't have the bridge you know the bridge on marshall is is the long pole in the tent right because that's we would otherwise have marshall connected um and then we could be more directive around parks one and two. What's your instinct around which would go first, go vertical, recognize parks aren't vertical, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Between one and two or <coughs> the town center and, and the, this community amenity? Uh, you know, hopefully from a lot of different angles, it's, it happens at the same time, which is next year. Uh, so we're, we're working, RC Superior is working on a new bond issuance um, against the tax increment um, pot of, of, of tax uh, income that the district has to <clears throat> refinance the existing bonds and, and issue a, a new larger bond that'll fund the parks and this $10 million obligation as well as pay back a lot of the existing infrastructure that's, that's out of pocket right now. Um, so my hope is that we start this project, Morgan Ranch, uh, in January of 2019, pending your approval this year, um, and would roughly be ready to start the park at the same time. Now we do, you know, Section 16 has some language that we do need to, the town and RC Superior cooperatively agree on what we think the budget for the parks is, and make sure that there's money out of that 10 million to pay for it. And um, that's where we just need to get with your your designer and understand the budget and what's what that looks like for those existing parks and the way they're designed. If we need to value engineer those and take some elements out in order to allocate more money towards this, you certainly have that option. 
Um, you know, we're, we're here to help you facilitate that. Ultimately, you have roughly $9.2 million remaining of that $10 million obligation to spend however you want, whether it's on parks or civic space. And if you were programming this space based on your other customer, your other clients, and kind of what you're seeing in other communities, how would you advise us today for that for this space, for the 9,000 feet, two floors, 4,500 feet to be programmed? I mean, I don't know if you guys have any thoughts on that. I, to me, flexibility is the most important thing um, because things are going to change. <laughs> you know, what the, the only constant is change, right? Um, so to the extent that we can, we can design flexible open spaces that potentially do have folding partitions that can close them into smaller rooms if you want the ability to have meetings here. Um, there's been talk in the past of some kind of a satellite library that could provide, uh, you know, at least computers and that kind of thing as a, as a public amenity, which I think would be, would be interesting. Um, you could use it potentially as some sort of a smaller fitness use. I mean, it, it really depends on what you as, as a town feel like you, you need. Um, to me, the more activated it can be and bring people into this plaza and activate the promenade, the better it is for the whole project. Um, but, but, you know, to me really, I think leaving flexibility kind of, I, I would do potentially a, a, some kind of a kitchen facility and then some pretty large wide open spaces that you can potentially partition into smaller areas as you, as you feel like you need to. And then the rest of it can be flexible furniture that you can move around and change out. And you know, that, that's easy to, easy to change. And do you see those, so those windows on the first floor, do you see those as almost being garage bays or something that could slide out certainly could be again it, you know it depends on what the use is back here but if this is a big flex space room that you can use for you know community yoga classes or you know whatever you want to use it for certainly these could be roll up windows i like the idea of having having garage door glass garage door type overhead um rollers that that can open the space up and again kind of bleed you know indoor and outdoor especially in the summer we do have a and the plan, let me get back to the plan here. Uh, and we do have a, a sort of a stage or performance area planned in the plaza here, which is right out front of that space, um, which you know could be pretty fun. And th this is envisioned to be a very active space, the start of start of races and um, you know hosting community events like that, and so having some true community space that the town owns here. You know, there, there's a lot of different ways you can use that space, especially if it's just wide open flex space that you can move furniture around. The, you know, the other the big part of that flex open space is having a lot of storage um, for different types of furniture that can roll up and get out of the way sometimes. And so we can, you know, with our designers work um, and come up with ideas for you, but we, we really wanna hear from you too what, what you want this to be. And in this concept, where where's the so the previous concept that had the clubhouse for those apartments there, right? And now you've got the <coughs> surround the, the parking in the middle. First, is that a is that a that's not a parking structure? That is. It is. Okay. So how many how large is that parking structure? Five, four levels, five levels, four and a half, four levels. 296 spaces of which about 100 at the very top would be private for the residential and 200 or so on levels one through three would be public um, for civic space, retail, public use. Okay. We didn't, we didn't yeah, and, and so the, the, the clubhouse facilities, so the, the original plan for this had a single story um, residential clubhouse here with a pool and little amenity yep. space on the ground floor here with a smaller parking surface parking area here. This moves that pool deck up to the roof of this um, of this wrap building, which is, I think, great for a couple of reasons. For one, it it takes the pool away from the public view, and so it's not so like there was some concern over people seeing the pool but not being able to use it and it feeling like a public pool even though it's not. And so I think putting it on the roof fixes that and makes it you know what it should be, which is a private amenity for these residents. It also gives it great views and makes it a really cool space. For as, as an amenity, um, but but in in place of that uh, in place of that pool, we've we've you know moved the leasing office and those uh, kind of lobby amenities down to this corner. 
um, and fitness. It will actually be on the second floor of this, the private fitness for the for the part, for the uh, residential community, um, and then replaced where that uh, where that clubhouse was with with your civic space, which I think yeah, makes I mean, a lot of sense. It does. So the space is great, right? I mean, I, from the I like the proximity to Village Green to the walkway. I think it's great. What I don't what's so unique about this whole area is the vista what i don't love is your you know if you can go back to showing the the one with the balcony and the grand staircase i mean you're you know people that are standing on that balcony are seeing there's there's no there's nobody that's in the community in the in the brick and mortar civic space i don't want to call it a community center or anything. i want to be careful about <laughs> brick and mortar civic, civic space, space. Um, that will have any view of a mountain. That's true. Yeah, and, and you know, you, you have to sort of pick and choose, right? Because I, I think, to me, the integration with the plaza and all the activity here is more important than a mountain view necessarily. Um, you know, if we put this on the other side of the building, it would just be fronting Marshall Road. It would be totally disconnected from the plaza and all the, and the promenade and all this sort of civic public space here, which doesn't make as much sense. Um, and on the, you know, eventually, depending on how blocks five and, and uh, two build out, you may not have a mountain view from that level anyway, eventually. Um, so to me, having this space, it's going to feel great because this, this whole plaza this is an acre plaza that's wide open with lots of activity and people on swings and bands playing and, you know, all, all kinds of fun stuff happening that I, I think that's, to me, more important. But I understand. Um, I really agree with that point. Um, I like that it goes out to the rest of public space versus mm -hmm. splitting up the two public spaces. Um, I do have a question about the parking garage based on what we just discussed. Um, will the parking garage only exit on the ground floor for pedestrians or will there be exits from the parking garage to the surrounding buildings at those levels? There will be exits from the parking garage to the to the building, both for residential and for a civic space um, at, at levels two, three, and four. Okay. Uh, the, the main entry pedestrian would, would really be um, coming down an elevator. There's a public elevator located right here that you can't see on the plan. And then there's residential elevator located here and here, um, which, the, you know, if you're a resident, you're going to come in. There's one parking entry off of Marshall Road here for your car. So you're going to come in the parking structure, wind up three levels of ramps and park on the top mm -hmm. and then take the residential elevator wherever you need to to your to your unit um, if you're coming as a member of the public to either use the restaurants or main street or civic space or plaza you're going to come in same place park on levels one through three and then use the public public elevator right here either to come or if you're on levels two you can go straight into the civic space okay. i think the, the, yeah that was really uh, my question so yeah two, and, they can't and, go in. Or, or you can take the elevator down to the ground floor and come through this uh, this is a pedestrian opening connecting the, the parking garage to the Plaza, and there's another one here that connects the parking garage out to Main Street. And then also, um, how many residents are intended to use those 100 parking spaces? And is there anything to prevent them from taking up all the public spaces on the lower levels? Yeah, parking management's a, you know, a bigger um, issue that we're going to have to spend a lot of time on. We have engaged Walker Parking, which is a professional parking consultant, um, to help us. Uh, so far, they've been looking at a shared parking use um, analysis that looks at all the different uses we have when when those ex uses are expected to have parking and then does sort of an analytical model on how many spaces we think this whole project needs um wh which is how we've come up with with this plan and this parking balance they'll also advise us um on parking management from a you know for for us as the retail owners we're just as if not more sensitive to that than than you are as the town mm -hmm. because we don't want private residents and their guests clogging up all of the retail parking spaces because the retailers need those spaces to function um so in general there will be some sort of a permit sticker type of a um, parking control system where if you're a resident you get a sticker and that lets you park in your designated parking area but you can't park in the, in the public spaces or at least not for more than two hours or something like that and we'll have to right kind of nail that down as we get closer um, with help from our consultants. And those those parking management plans tend to be sort of living yeah. documents as as you develop and as you see how the spaces are used, you develop 
you know, shorter time frames in some spaces where you need that and, and maybe not in others where it's less sensitive, so. Great, yeah, one thing that will be important to me is making sure that in those lower levels of the parking garage, there is a strict time limit yeah. on how long people can be there. Sure. Is it contemplated that those parking spaces would be free to the community or that they would be metered? Uh, so that it'll be treated like the rest of the metro district owned parking, like this parking structure here. Mm -hmm. Right now, that's all free to the public. The metro district does have the ability to add some sort of a paid parking scenario in the future if it needs to in order to offset its, its costs as a public mm -hmm. quasi-government agency. Um, right now, the plan is to have it as, as free public parking, but there's no covenant on that. Okay. But it would be, sorry to, to clarify, we have this, the public portion of this garage would be dedicated to the Metro District, just like this parking garage has been dedicated to the Metro District, and it would be owned and managed and maintained by the Metro District for public use. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bill, I appreciate it, and thanks to you for coming back here, you know, taking everything you heard from us in April, digesting it, and, and coming back here in light of your, you know, um, everything else, all the feedback we gave you, um, came back with a definitely a, a, a more improved plan for you know sort of unlocking that community space but you know to trustee ryan's point you know i one of the prior to coming to the meeting i kind of looked at some of the other places like this across you know the greater boulder valley and longmont you know did an expansion in 2015 you know four and a half million dollars for 10 000, 11 000 square feet so 400 bucks a square foot um they have a 25 or i forget how many people i think it's a 250 uh, foot I'm sorry, 250 person auditorium inside that. So, you know, $400 a square foot. I'm just struggling with the economics, you know, dialing it back because I just want to make sure that we can, you know, maximize the value here. You know, if we're getting two to $300 a square foot in terms of infrastructure, you know, obviously you've got shared mobilization fees and all sorts of cost sharing or, you know, economies of scale here, which will, yeah. you know, give you a whole lot more capacity. Um, but I'm just a little worried about, you know, starting with a two to three million dollar budget nine thousand square feet and then you know breaking ground a year from now as costs go up we're seeing concrete costs go up 25 percent year over year you know how that starts to you know, to change mm -hmm. and you know what the recourse is if we run out of money um, love to hear your thoughts there because you know i know the cost sharing agreement has no scalar it's sort of frozen in time right and we've all seen what's happened at cost of steel and concrete in the last two years. It's just mind numbing. Yeah, I mean, I, so I, I think we need to, you know, both engage. Um, well, certainly we, we need to engage our, our contractors, um, which we have already. We're, we're gonna go through, a, we're going through the process right now. We're probably, what are we, 90, 80% through schematic design on, on our project, on, on all the private, Work, which includes now this, this or will include if you like this this civic space um we'll we'll treat this from a design standpoint as if it's part of our project and we'll bid it as if it's part of our project so we'll get a guaranteed maximum price sure. from our contractor sometime around the depending on when you approve it third quarter fourth quarter of this year and which which will lock in the price for this and that that puts that risk on the on the general contractor at that point and that's how we mitigate our risk from a private construction standpoint too Fair so enough. we'll have a number before we start break ground on, on the total that it's gonna to cost to, to deliver it. Um, what we need to do to get there is to really define What's in what it? it is. Right now, you know, we have it as sort of a blank shell with a drop-in ceiling and some lights and, and carpet probably um, with not a lot of specialty furniture or anything else. And so we need to figure out what that looks like. That, that budget could easily get to three or four depending on what you do with it, you are gonna save, you're gonna have some savings here as compared to a standalone community center because it's built into the larger building. So you're saving a lot of skin. It doesn't have its own roof really. It doesn't have its own, you know, three of the walls are sort of interior to the building that, that don't, would, would typically need more expensive finishes. So you're saving some money just by the fact that it's integrated into this, into this larger private building. Um, but you know, also we're planning a simple space right now and that's why the number is what it is. If we want to add a pool, it's going to get a lot more expensive. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll continue to work with you. I think we just need to understand, um, what, what the town's goals are here for program and finish. And we can continue to have these cut type of sessions, bring back new drawings, um, you know, over the next couple of months alongside the FTP and see how that develops. And then we'll give you a price for it along, sure. along with when we get a price for everything else. Now, alongside that, we do need to focus on the parks 
and understand what the cost is there because we we don't actually control that process at all that's the town's design that the town owns and uh, working with matrix um and so you know getting an updated engineer's estimate from them and then ultimately we can help get a contractor's estimate for the park as well which we probably should um but we're going to need to do both of those things sort of in tandem over the next yeah actually i think that's a critical component you know the relative seesaw between the two in terms of cost and you know where we choose to allocate you know more of the, the funds because that's not something that's been on my radar mm -hmm. you know in terms of how we may want to allocate funds um just out of curiosity you know if you if you look at that square um you know walk me through the, the decision to put the community space you know at the northeast corner as opposed to the southeast corner obviously the southeast corner is the commercial core mm -hmm. but you know as, as we think about how it sort of potentially you know, is you know, able to capitalize on the views of that corner um, I'm just curious you know the, the decision making in per terms of putting on that northeast corner well it does a couple of things I mean for, for one it's it's really just what we talked about at the concept hearing because that's where our amenity was before and we heard from everybody we really want a civic space in that building so we put a civic space in that building um, I, I do think it makes a lot of sense because it draws a civic function into this corner of the plaza which is otherwise tough to activate this is is unleasable as retail space or anything else really because it doesn't have the immediate proximity to parking like like this does um it, it does have you know good proximity to parking both here and really here which i like to provide parking when you do have a civic function there um but it, it, you know I, I wouldn't be able to lease this as retail space and so it makes a lot of sense i think both from a private standpoint and from a public standpoint to have it there it also does a nice job of sort of bridging the gap between you know the, the park promenade comes down into the civic space and then out to, to main street instead of sort of anchoring one end of it um so you know I, I think it does a, i think it does what it should which is activating an otherwise sort of difficult part of the project right in in the very heart of the project thanks mm -hmm. <clears throat> so i just wanted to clarify one of my earlier uh points if we could move to the to the front of the building again um <clears throat> so earlier i in seeing the articulated in the colors uh the color change here i thought the articulation was actually showing levels rather than just the staircase my eyes just didn't pick up on what i was looking at mm -hmm. um i'd like to take back what i said I, rather than seeing just a staircase i'd rather see this as different levels of stairs that way you're adding a seating component and you can actually look out to the rest and you're actually participating and in, in becoming more mm -hmm. uh, immersed in what's happening out in the center so right now i'm assuming this is just a flat wall right yeah so in my mind that's wasted space that we could be doing better with um and again to i like what kevin was saying adding uh garage door style uh windows there that can come up and you can come out it, again that's what i'd also like to see up here especially if we can add some type of patio or walkway up here it doesn't have to be gigantic maybe it's four feet five feet wide something like that that overhangs but now just being able to activate and come into that space makes that just so much more of a useful uh great experience type environment rather than being completely closed in uh within the interior of the building so yeah no, and that's it's, it's an interesting thought about the stairs um and i in a lot of ways agree with you that it'd be interesting to have a you know a wider stair sort of marching down towards the plaza so that people can sit on the stairs and look into the plaza and it becomes sort of a, a bleachers for the plaza and for that bandstand and everything the 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 design problem or issue with that is that you know like you, you can see here in profile those stairs if they go perpendicular to where they are now are going to take up 30 feet of of depth which either eat up most of the space we have in the building for this um or start to push out into that plaza area yeah. and, and encro encroach into the promenade which i'm actually okay with i was gonna say do you have a problem with that? I, I don't necessarily have a problem with that i think it's kind of interesting actually as you're walking down the promenade you could see these stairs stepping down you know across your field of, of vision and gets kind of interesting um it would you know it complicates things a little bit because we're going to need to figure out how the property line works with that and mm -hmm. it, but that we can do that we're going to move property lines with this anyway so if if you're all collectively good with those stairs encroaching into the public space the, the true public i guess they're both public space but the um the plaza and the promenade tracts then I, you know, I think we can. That's certainly something we can look at, and I, I do think it's an interesting, interesting, interesting idea. 
I, I would prefer not to have the stairs encroach into that space, only because I know earlier you were talking about one of the potential uses being as a start for races and things like that, yeah. and you take that away if you block off well, that promenade. It, it, it's, it's a big space, though. I mean, it, the stairs, if they did encroach, it would be like to that line there. So, so I mean, the plaza is still plenty big to. Well, the plaza is, but then you're blocking off that whole promenade, which I was assuming was what you meant. Yeah, no, I, yeah, thinking space. about, and, and maybe we, you know, we can look at design. Maybe it only encroaches twelve feet, so it kind of comes halfway out or something, and then part of it pushes back into the building, and so you, you will have I, to. I definitely don't want to take any building space away yeah. for it, though. Also, um, I'm wondering if we could just take the current design rather than having the stairs come out even if we were doing like a railing and it's open or plexiglass mm -hmm. or something where people could see from the stairs out to the plaza without actually having the stairs encroach at all on that. Or maybe they even just, you know, we can maybe they just turn 20 degrees so they sort of address the plaza more, but they don't take up quite so much room. You can see what I'm talking about. If you take this stair run and you flip it this way, mm -hmm. you know, that, that eats up most of this, this space or, or you know, likewise it's going to eat up. Yeah. Some of the some of the space out here, but you know, let us. I think that's an interesting idea. Either way, and let's let's look at a couple of options, um, and we can continue to talk about those. So there's a lot to absorb, and and this is good. I think it's it's improving, right? Um, I think we talked about the seesaw between park and brick and mortar, right? I I want. I mean, I'll tell you, I, I think the, the obligation of the parks, I recognize that there is some, again, not a legal term, but a interpretive term of, an, of ambiguity. But the fact that we're going to be talking about millions of dollars to parks one and two out of that $10 million, which was originally, you know, the, the legacy on that came from, okay, maybe it's a, you know, it's a new town hall. It's a very large recreation center to, you know, we're whittling that away. And now we've whittled that down to, you know, something that might be a couple million dollars for, you know, 9,000 square feet that has just um, a shell. So I, I want to push as hard as I can on this brick and mortar amenity. Um, that doesn't mean that I want to abandon parks one and two, but I think there's, if we were, if there was no amenity, if there was no $10 million that we were talking about, I think you would be very focused on building out parks one and two and making that a destination and bringing in some ball fields. It might not look as nice as, you know, it may not have the, uh, the, um, the, the concession stand that we're thinking about, or, you know, you might have to dial it down a little bit, but my sense is you'd still be building parks one and two. I have no sense that you'd be building this community space, this brick and mortar community space. So I wanna push as hard as I can to uh, meet the original intent of the previous boards yeah. um, around that brick and mortar. So that's, that's I, I want more out of the community space, not less. To that effect, remind me again, what's on the, uh, I see those nice looking people up on the ceiling. Who are those nice looking people? One of these. Yep. Yep. There's tenants. three people up there. Yep. I don't want tenants on on the roof of my. Yeah, we, uh, we talked space, about that. Right. We we talked about that right before coming in here. This is a that'll change. This is a difficult space to manage anyway because you're not going to have multiple residential units that share a balcony. So, you know, these likely, if there are private outdoor spaces up here, get much smaller, tucked back up up against the residential building, and then this just becomes a roof of the of the space. So you're not going to have that kind of condition, um, like it's shown here, I don't think. If you can program, well, not so fast, right? I do think if you could find a way to program the roof to be additional outdoor space, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, if that roof is programmed for additional outdoor space, I think that roof on that gray part of the building should be set aside for the community. You but mean public, that, yeah. But that makes it hard because I recognize you want to put, you know, those windows are uh, yeah. residential. <laughs> yeah. You don't, yeah, that, yeah. That, that doesn't, doesn't, right. doesn't work. So that's honestly. a balance, right? Yeah. So it's, you know, unless that is a, you know, unless you plan on building the, you know, the, the multi-million dollar penthouse with a balcony that size, 
but even if you have a multi-million dollar resident up there with a balcony of that size, the balcony should not be on the town's building. So Agreed. I'll push back pretty hard on that during the... Okay. No, that's, that's not a problem. I agree with you. But I like the, you know, sometimes, you know, that big wall that says, I think Ken has a good point, you know, superior civic space and that wall that, you know, it's hard to tell how high it is, but, you know, maybe 15, 20 feet high. If you could somehow either pivot those stairs, I mean, I agree with both Ken and Laura. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to compromise the existing outdoor space we have because an acre sounds like a lot, but it's really not that big, right? I don't want to compromise that. At the same time, if you could somehow make those stairs dual use for folks that are, you know, sitting there either watching something that's happening in the park or enjoying their lunch from the cafe there, but somehow if those steps could almost be programmed, I think that would be really, that would be a cool use. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Um, and what's your current, so we had a pretty lengthy discussion around um, grass versus turf. And I know we're sort of outside the, you know, we're talking about the brick and mortar, but have you given any more thoughts? I've been to a few different spaces. I have enough pictures that I'll email uh, Matt for him to forward to you guys. Um, I've seen a couple of these kind of new developments and I'm not seeing any grass. I'm seeing all 100% turf, yeah. three for three. I, I think that's where we ended up in our last in our last meeting with, with DIG, just because of the maintenance you don't wanna, you know, this is gonna hopefully be a very heavy traffic area with lots of events all the time with natural turf it's just going to die and then stay dead and then you have to rope it off to reestablish the turf and all that. I, you know, I, I think with the amount of traffic we're looking at here, we're thinking artificial turf is better. We will definitely use a high quality one that, you know, that feels, uh, feels natural and everything. Um, but it also, you know, it allows more flexibility in the winter for different winter uses to come on there and, and use it. Um, so I, I think turf is the, the way to go. Is that, is that where you were going to? Yeah. Or? Okay, good. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, my sense is I, I think even though it's, I recognize people are a little sensitive to AstroTurf. I think there's been some advances yep. to it. Um, so it won't get as hot underfoot. Um, I think from a, the sun, it'll be interesting to see your sun study on this one, the shade study, because I do think this will be kind of in the shade a decent amount. Um, you know, I think there's both, but I think where the you know, late afternoons, I think you're gonna see some good shade in there. So I'm not overly worried about the, the sun study. Mm -hmm. I do worry about we're a pretty dog friendly community. Um, I do worry about people. You, we all, it, people will obviously not be able to bring their pets on turf. You don't want their pets eliminating on AstroTurf. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's a downside, but I think you're right. I think if it was grass, it would yeah. have to be closed months out of the year right yeah no, i agree with you and, and on the dogs we are showing a small dog park right. here as part of our project as well as the central park dog park um so you know just to, to and just there's to a clarify, much larger because park we have a couple requests. requests when you say small dog park do you mean a dog park that is small or a dog park for small dogs i meant a, a dog park that is small but uh <laughs> okay. but we're we're open to <laughs> it's fine it's just we have we literally we have requests for a for a dedicated small dog, dog park park for small dogs. I don't have an opinion one way or another. It's something I'm, I'm gonna do some studying on that, but when you said small dog park, I wanted to I should, yeah, thanks. And no cheap <laughs> Sandy? Bill, I appreciate that, that you made some changes from when we met before. I'm particularly appreciative that the parking garage is there because that, that was a concern that I had generally. Um, you know, from my personal perspective, I agree with you completely. I want this to be flexible space. We have a massive problem in the town of Superior of no community gathering space. So I really want this to be um, flexible. I guess the biggest disappointment for me is that I've looked at beautiful drawings that um, our director of Parks and Rec presented to us for years. And we always had those beautiful views of the mountains and they're gone. They're completely gone in this rendering. And so if there is any way that that top floor can be somehow 
um, reclaimed for the town so that we can get those views. I mean, Superior Town, this is our downtown, and that our downtown is not going to be able to take advantage of that unbelievably beautiful view um, in our own civic space is, it's disappointing. I mean, I understand you've got design constraints, but if there's a way you can make that happen, you'll make me a whole lot happier. But I do agree. Um, there, there are ways we could take that flexible space and do a lot of the things that we wanna do, but if we try and turn it into a library or other specific problem solver exercise space or whatever it is, it really, and 9,000 square feet really isn't that much space in the big scheme of things. So I would be um, really interested in um, any suggestions that your designers have for how to use the space in a flexible, very flexible way, but that we could do, lot, you know, we could have meetings. Maybe we do have a stage for dramatic activities or whatever, but um, I want it to be very flexible. Um, Bill, one thought Actually, around what Sandy just said. Um, the, I realize we're talking just about this one corner and this one piece of civic space right now, but the parking garage that we haven't discussed yet, the larger one that's over to the side, that one is much closer to the views to the mountains. So maybe one possibility would be if we could add an extra top level, not enclosed space, but even like patio on that. That might help us get the mountain views without significant cost of like a full mm -hmm. indoor story. Just, yeah, just, a, just a thought. No, and, that, and that's, that's, that's fair. And I think that's will continue to be open for discussion. You know, because this project is getting funded right now, mm -hmm. I think, yeah, and this is not right now. <laughs> this depends on what happens with all these other uses around here and, and how those develop. Um, I, you know, I think it's noted, and we should keep that in mind when we start talking about what happens on this block. But for now, let's make it as good as we can Understood. where where we can right now. Uh, yeah, and and, and I, I guess. Uh, I'll let you keep going. Any other comments? Yep. So, Bill, I apologize. You probably said this an hour ago, and it just didn't register. I mean, when, when you put this together, was your design constraint the 9,000 square feet or the dollars? Uh, really, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a mix of a lot of things, right? I mean, it's looking at the space and what really works. It's looking at the dimensions of the site. This parking garage really can't get any smaller because the slopes have to be a certain length. Um, and so, you know, this, this, is, this is the space that we have to, to play with, really. Um, I think the 2 to $3 million budget does sound about right, knowing that we have a little over nine to spend and we have two big parks to build still. Um, again, we're happy to do kind of whatever you want to do. If you want to make this smaller and parks better, that's fine with us. Yeah, well, I want to at least this better. have the thought discussion with respect to, you know, borrowing a million and a half away from the parks and throwing at the civic space only because you know, the leverage we get with you as the builder is going to be a lot greater on the concrete portion of the development as opposed to the park. Um, you know, if we threw another million and a half at it, made it four and a half, is it suddenly, you know, 14,000 square feet, 13,000 square feet? You know, if that was a possibility, does that build it up another level or is that already intruding on your planned? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't love it because it kills residential units, which right. are part of my project and, and makes the private project less valuable for Morgan Ranch, which... You know, it's, it's kind of complicated because Morgan Ranch doesn't have this obligation. RC Superior has this obligation to deliver the civic space. Right. And Morgan Ranch has a contract for this land. So to some extent, Morgan Ranch can just say no to RC Superior, who's asking us to take on this obligation for them. Now, obviously, you know that I am intimately involved in all of those parties. And so we're making it work as well as we can. Um, the answer, the short answer, yes, if you had $5 million to spend on this building, potentially you could go up a level. I would lose another however many residential units, um, you still likely wouldn't get that view to the west um, being on this side of the building because the parking structure is actually a little bit taller than sure. the building is here. And so even if you were on the roof, you're still going to have a wall behind you yeah. um, unless we moved this over to you know this side of the building, which again, I don't, right. I don't think, I, th I think the proximity to the plaza and the public use overrides the consideration. Yeah, of I mean, my, my question is kind of twofold. One is, you know, 
really in terms of just maximizing, as Sandy alluded to, you know, in terms of trying to maximize the amount of space, because whatever we have, we'll, we'll use it, mm -hmm. you know, in, in terms of trying to get the greatest amount of bang and, for the buck. And I think the, I think the biggest, the, the easiest answer to the question is, is diving into the budget on the parks yeah. and seeing what that's at right now. Right. If it's at $5 million, you know, maybe you can cut a million dollars and give more money to this. If it's at $10 million, <laughs> I, and I honestly, I don't know. If it's at $10 million, then we already have to cut out $3 million just to make this work. You know, that gets harder. So I don't know what the budget on the parks is right now. Um, well, Matt and Patrick, do you know? Uh, we we don't have the final est engineer estimates on it, but we're working on that. So um, do you we'll have a ballpark assume, idea? Uh huh. Do you have a ballpark idea based on what we saw? Yeah, five to six million dollars. Is it fair to say that the enhancements made to Coal Creek getting ahead of that may reduce the initial budget we saw around parks one and two that's fair statement yep. okay so that could be some savings yep. um what if it was play a hypothetical by all means yeah play a hypothetical what if it was zero dollars for the park and ten million dollars and we said we wanted an aquatics on the roof so well you can't do that <laughs> is the answer what? not allowed the, um, by, not allowed by by the cost sharing agreement. But if we mutually agree, cost sharing. Well, I want I want to build that park. Though. I don't want it to be a big dirt lot in the middle of my project. I mean, that's that that's sort of protecting but us from a private standpoint too. Thank you to actually say that. So I don't want a big dirt lot in the middle of the project either. So, but if we don't mutually agree, then we're <laughs> gonna have a big dirt lot in the middle of the project. That'd be bad for you. Yes, it would be bad for me to have a big dirt lot in the middle of my project. So would you build the park regardless? No, I'm not going to give you extra money for the park if you spend well, all your money. Have, <laughs> what, so, but, so the, so the, 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 the cost-sharing cost agreement defines civic space as this and any kind of town hall that you want. I mean, I, actually, I'll, I'll just um, quickly. It's going to be tough to read. A town hall, a community recreation center, a library, public park improvements, and one or more multi-purpose athletic fields. Um, and it goes on to excluding private improvements um, and many contributions of land so we can't count land value as part of the contribution but the civic space defined includes all the buildings and the park and down in section 16 well it, it basically, basically we need to we, 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 hold, on, hold on a second so, so it doesn't actually define any and all parks any and all town halls any and all community recreation centers, any and all libraries, any and all multi-purpose events. No, it, yeah, it, it, it defines, can't include any of it, those things. It, defines, it, it could right. include, but it doesn't mean that all of them are. It says certain public improvements to be mutually agreed upon. So, I mean, that, I think that's, that's Trustee Ryan's point. Right. Is so the hypothetical. The hypothetical is to be, what are we mutually agreeing upon? And so if a hypothetical if we wanted to put aquatics, so I recognize that you know not that the retail space is is of extreme value and and we're site limited here. But from a rooftop perspective, and from a hypothetical perspective, with is there an opportunity for aquatics on the roof for for the community? I realistically no, because. From a design standpoint, it's not going to work with the rest of the project that we have around it. And from a budget standpoint, there's not going to be enough money to pay for it. So not enough budget. Out of, so aquatics are, indoor aquatics are challenging because you start putting aquatics indoors and you're talking and you get a 25 meter pole that's four or five lanes. You're talking 12, $14 million just for that. Patrick Affirmative head nod, yes. So, but outdoor aquatics, you're not for 25 meter pole for three or four lanes, or even some type of um, more social pole. We're not anywhere close to $12 million. You're not gonna spend $12 million for your rooftop pool, but it's for a couple hundred apartment dwellers. This would be an amenity, hypothetically, an amenity that would be available for the community that could have 100 125 people at any point so you would want a pool large enough would the rooftop of the garage setting aside the financial limitations a minute 
with a rooftop on the garage fit a pool that could have 100, 125 people at any point in time? Not with the other amenities we need up there, no. The other amenities you need. This, the... this garage, like a, a fully prior, a fully public garage that was a standalone thing, certainly could if there was money to pay for it. This this garage has to serve this residential project as well as this retail project, and has residential amenities on the roof already by necessity. So by necessity of what? And what are those amenities? The, the residential project needs amenities to be able to lease units and be attractive in the marketplace. But there's no place right, to put so it. So I get that. So when I look at all, so for those watching at home, could you, I know which, what, who the, those apartments are. Can you draw a box with the mouse around? So all of the, everything north, everything in orange or yellow, actually, well, sorry, sorry. This is apartment, this is residential units above uh, retail, as, as is this and this. This is residential units wrapped around above retail. Um, and then these are all residential units. So all those folks you're saying would have access to the pool and they need, in order for you to lease that space, they need some type of gym, private, private residential amenities. Yeah. Private residential amenity. What other spaces did you look at for private residential amenities? This obviously wasn't the only space you looked at. Well, we had that ground floor here before we introduced the parking structure in this whole I think in the last working session, we suggested moving the pool to that uppermost right corner. Was that looked at? Yeah, I mean, we, we need parking here. We, we like the amenities central to the project and located proximate to Main Street so that with traffic coming in, you see the leasing office and that's connected to the pool for a leasing tour. And so it's, it's important that that all be down here. Patrick, when we were looking at the potential rec center addition to the sports stable. We originally had a two-story plan that was just rec center, and then we looked at a three-story plan that then had a civic space component. How many square feet was the third floor civic space component based on that plan? Off the top of my head, I want to say we were between five and 7,000 square feet. And do you recall with that with counting in that balcony space but i i could i could double check do you recall quickly. what the total square footage of that whole project was let's say we were in the 20s if we were counting all all of those floors and balcony space i i could pull that up though fairly quickly yeah i'm just i'm just kind of curious because you know it's i think it would be helpful because you know, we, we certainly like that civic space component, especially, you know, with the views out to the west and we had the, you know, the big windows that were opening up and we like the idea of having, you know, flex space that you know, we could be using for you know, lots of different events, right? You know, community gathering. I mean, one of the needs that we really have here is a need for getting a large group of people together in one spot. And I just want to make sure that, you know, 9,000 square feet here, I mean, it's really 4,500 square feet, right? Um, 4,500 square feet per floor, you know, times two, is sufficient to house enough residents that we're looking to actually house. Yeah, and part of this could be, you know, you tell us how big of an event you want to be able to host. You want a 500-person event, you want a 300-person event. What, what's, what's a realistic size? And we can, you know, take that back in, in design and, and make sure we're accommodating it. Those, those two levels could be connected by some kind of a grand stair that makes them feel like part of one space if you wanted to do that. Um, you know, we, we, we can look at other options. It's just, right. again, meeting whatever you want the program to be and how many people you want to be able to fit in this thing. Yeah, I mean, if we're doing a, you know, kind of community art walk, you know, something like that where we have, you know, local artists that have, you know, we're basically turning it into a museum, then, you know, that staircase works and people, it's an active space where people are walking throughout it. Um, if we're actually having, you know, the mayor's state of superior event where, you know, that's kind of the largest event that we have on an annual basis now where we're addressing. He'll, he'll be uh, on the, he'll be on a stage addressing the, uh, the crowds in the yeah. plaza. We could do that. We could do that. But, um, you know, if the weather's not cooperative and we want to do it indoors, sure. um, you know, what, what can we, what can we do with 4,500 square feet is my question. 
Well, I mean, this this building here is 5,000 square feet, just under 5,000 square feet, um, and it's divided up into a bunch of different spaces. So I think um, two levels of 5,000 square feet, you can do quite a bit with as far as events goes, and especially if the second floor is basically two levels. I mean, with the ceiling heights being so tall, it gives it that added space and feeling and atmosphere when mm -hmm. it comes to events. Who, who would own this space? Would this be something that would be dedicated the to the town? Yeah. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do either an airspace parcel or a condo map and break it out as a separate separate ownership along with the, the retail. So the retail would be a single owner, the civic space would be the town, and then the residential above is a third owner. So and in, conne in connection with that, the town, if the town decides initially that you know, what we're looking for is you know meeting space and then at some point in the future something else is built that satisfies that need and we want to convert it into a library or we want to convert it into something else we'll have flexibility to do whatever whatever sort of community type use we deem is appropriate yeah i mean we haven't thought about you know covenants on this type of thing i don't think there's any need to with the town owning it as long as it's from our standpoint as long as it's you know, not a lewd activity or anything illegal or, you know, anything like that that's going to bring the, the value of the surrounding area down. And obviously, if the town owns it and it's for civic use, I think no matter what it's used for, it'll be a positive, but what engaging we, activity. That's a good thing. So, But there will be, this is going to be a beautiful space, right? And first, you know, I mean, this is, we're, we're moving in the right direction, mm -hmm. which I, I'm very appreciative of. Just when you start thinking about 4,500 square feet, and then I think about the need for some type of kitchen, mm -hmm. right? That's, if it was, if this was commercial space, we would need 30 to 40, probably 40% 40 for a kitchen. It's not commercial space. So, but let's assume I still need 20% for a kitchen. I need another 10, 15% for storage of the type of furniture that's gonna be in and out, whether or not it's the tables or something like that so you know i'm left on the ground floor with a room that's not much bigger than the room we're in right now well let's i mean let, let's let's look at actual space plans we can show you a kitchen if you want a kitchen that's a good input we can put a kitchen in um, i think storage is is hugely important to be able to store tables and stuff like we talked about so we should plan a, a large storage area um, let's continue to look at floor plans and show you what it looks like. And we'd actually do some renderings of the interior also and yeah. give you a feel for the space. Like so Matt said, this whole building is 5,000 square feet, not this room, but the whole building. This room is roughly one third the size of yeah. that, that civic space. Room. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that's my, that was my estimate that, you know, I'm going to lose at least half the 4,500 for storage and kitchen and, and restrooms. And so it's just, we're we'll starting to and we're we're right now we're showing restrooms on the second level only again all this is subject to your input but we're showing restrooms on the second level only this space could be a kitchen if you wanted it to be a kitchen pre-function doesn't need to be that big pre-function could just be a space off of the terrace um alternatively if you want to put a kitchen downstairs i think a kitchen could easily fit sort of in that notch there and leave the majority of this civic space you know open for uh for for kind of flexible use so in um, general my i think you're aware of my um hard stop to catch a flight, right? So I think we probably have plenty of time, but just in, in case this conversation continues, I'll sure. apologize now for departing probably between 8.10 and 8.15. Um, but the, I, I, I personally, I think this is positive movement in the right direction. I think the feedback, the reason why we're doing this now is because you're, you're getting ready with an application for a large area. And if you're thinking about the Lego blocks and what goes where, we don't want to, come to you post application and say, oh, we should have put the community space over here instead of over there. So we're trying to make sure we have the right decisions. So thank you for taking the time for that. My feedback to you, number one, if I'm balancing brick and mortar versus park, I think as you can imagine, I want more for the brick and mortar than I do for the parks. I think the parks are more your responsibility than ours. I recognize that there's some weirdness in the language, so it's gonna be some shared responsibility. But I think you'll build those parks anyway because you don't want a big empty dirt lot. I think if this was, I think if you had access to, to lease this, I think you would make this a community room for your future tenants. I think it might be 
I don't know. I don't know what you would do, but it wouldn't be. You wouldn't. It, I don't think it would be vacant. Um, so I'd like this to be dedicated more for the town. I think 4,500 square feet on the second floor is fine. I'd like for the first floor to have 4,500 square feet of usable space, which means that we need to make this bigger because by the time you have storage and kitchen area, I don't have anywhere close to 4,500 square feet of usable space. When I see that residential leasing office, I don't see why there's you couldn't put that residential leasing office on the second floor or potentially a storefront elsewhere. I think that's an opportunity for us to, to have that. And then the garage pass through is happens between our space. But I'd like to see a little bit more than the 4,500 on the first floor. And the parking is great, by the way. I really appreciate it. I think you listen nicely around our concerns around the absence of parking. I think having roughly 100 spaces dedicated for this, as well as the you know the shoppers, I think that's that's going to make a big difference. Patrick, did you find the square footage? Yeah, so um, excluding the recreational usage, right? so more of the community usage, we're looking at a total of 17,000 total. Um, and a decent portion of that was, if you remember at the front of the building, we had talked about the removable walls. So you could have a large um, gathering area, two to 300 person gathering area. So- um, That was all on the third floor? All on the third floor. And that included it, the patio? That? Uh, that does include the patio. Yeah, I mean, that was, that was a big space. And, and there are, you know, I'm actually just uh, kind of looking at some of the renderings and this was kind of towards the end of those pro that project. I could tell that we were starting to throw some like additional restroom amenities from the second floor onto the third floor. We had moved classroom space. Um, so, but yeah, we were looking about 17. And when, when we looked at what that was actually gonna cost before we actually killed the project, where, where did we end up, 20 million? Yeah, yeah, for all for all three floors. 18, 20 million, something like that. Okay. So, pool pool was a yeah, large yeah, yeah, chunk yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah obviously. Yeah. But that that community space wasn't getting built without a pool <laughs> below it. So, um, I'll echo what what was said um, just now by Kevin. Uh, I'm I'm concerned too of the need for storage and the need for you know kitchen and restrooms kind of cannibalizing this space and then all of a sudden you know 9,000 square feet becomes 4,500 5,000 square feet of actual usable space um, so we need to to figure out ways to actually I, I just I wouldn't want to see this delivered and then turn it turns out that it's really not usable in the, in the manner in which we were hoping it would be um, because we need civic space. It was certainly contemplated within the governing documents. Um, and, you know, we want to have functional civic space that, mm -hmm. that really is, is useful. I agree the, the parking structure in this, in this project is a huge improvement. Um, it's desperately needed, I think. And I think it's going to be something that, I mean, it's going to add value to your project. It's also going to add value to the town. Um, because people are going to be traveling downtown and they're not all going to be parking along Main Street. They're going to need to have a place to park. Um, and you're going to want to park parking in a parking garage. Um, and hopefully that will then uh, avoid the need for you know, too much surface parking. And you, you can actually kind of fit some more you know, dense urban you know, structures there that you're not leaving room for just surface parking lots. Um, you know, in, in terms of the you know the, the look and feel of, of the design I, I think it looks great I think it's I think the whole development looks great and I think that this is going to be a really valuable amenity for the for the community I think the 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 real importance of of what this is bringing to the development is flexibility right and we need to have that meeting space we need to have a place for you know movable walls so we can have. You know, be able to program you know smaller meeting spaces and then larger meeting spaces and then events um, whether you're doing classes or whatever you, you know, that, that's that's something to be decided in the future really but um, I think the the bigger the space the more usable the space the more options we have going forward so um, I'm really encouraged I appreciate the fact that you guys took the time to 
to come up with this idea and you know, integrate the parking structure. I think it's a definite step in the right direction. Um, I'm going to raise a big can of worms and based on Kevin's comment around Lego blocks and moving things around, um, I understand it's not as easy just to swap things around. But if we go back to the map of where everything's located, um, would there be any possibility of switching the leasing center with the community space in order for put in order for the community space to potentially either be taller or have a roof deck and then be able to look out kind of over that street view and get the western mountain views that we're talking about no Okay. <laughs> the, uh, for a couple of reasons, you know, what, one is having the, the leasing office here at this corner um, for the residential project is, is important More from, central, a, yeah. from a standpoint of getting it financed and operating it. And, uh, you know, our, our residential development partner is here. He'll tell you if I if I let you put the leasing office back here, they're like out of the deal. Okay. <laughs> um, so I, I, I need to keep the leasing office, you know, down, down here. The other thing, you know, on the Mountain View, you wouldn't get a mountain view anyway. The, the flat iron view is really out this way, this corner, the sort of north um, west direction. You know, there there is. I'm wondering if if there's a way to put some kind of deck on the second level on this edge that could potentially see out and over these mm -hmm. buildings towards the mountains. Which I can we can certainly look at that and run some some analysis on that. We we have the 3D model with the mountains in it, so we can put all these buildings in and actually see what that looks like. Great. Um, so you know, in addition to this deck that we have planned here, we could do a a deck or garage doors or something like that 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 potentially gets some view this way um and we'll certainly certainly look at that okay just wanted to make sure i brought that up tonight and not down the road can we also get a copy of this and yeah. matt can you just put it in with the the board materials for this if possible just so then I can go back and say, oh, yeah, 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 I remember this, because we haven't seen this, yeah, yeah. this latest iteration. Uh, they brought a flash done. drive tonight to the meeting, so I couldn't get it to you ahead of time. Okay. But we'll also put it, include it as part of the public packet that's on okay, the Okay, that'd be so great, just have, so we have a copy yeah. of it also. Yeah, and I apologize for not getting it to you sooner. I would have liked to, but I had a baby, and they've been uh, working on it until this morning, yeah. so. <laughs> How long are you going to be able right, to Your baby's going to college next year. <laughs> yeah, come on. Yeah. But anyway, it would be helpful to have a copy of that. Thank we, you. Can we take note? It's at, It's not in the scope, but I do notice the change in the orientation on some of those buildings. Is that your intent there? Which? Um, I forget what block down on the bottom. Oh, yeah, it is. Uh, we, you know, we didn't talk about that, but again, responding to your other, I took away three or four major comments from the, from the um, last meeting. We, we have reoriented this. We lost a couple of units, um, but in order to respond to your comments, we thought it was worthwhile. So these now are, are actually some uh, some uh, natural stormwater treatment, um, sort of bios whales in the middle with parking around them, and then all the residential does face a, a public right away now, um, except for this one little block, which faces a sort of private interior street, but is still facing a street, so. Bioswarm swale does not sound as nice as it looks. Well, that's it's, it's what's out here on Main Street at these corners. It actually does look nice. It's it's just native grasses and things that can help help treat. <laughs> no, bio, you should you should reorient your thing. Bioswales are a good thing. They they are positive for stormwater management. They have nice grasses. They look very natural and pretty flowers, all that kind of thing. So, and what's the timing just for those watching at home? What's the timing to come back with this? application what are you thinking so ktgy is working on the final development plan for formal application i think there's a draft due to us like now ish <laughs> and we're planning on submitting the end of this month um so we'll you know we'll look at some tweaks on on this and we'll clean up the rest of the drawings and have an application package in uh, by july 1st two weeks from now so we may see it early august is that what you're saying the board um we, you know, staff, we've got our staff review, um, and it just depends on how clean the snow is when we get it, and how many comments we have, and how long those take to get resolved. It could be, I mean, early August is optimistic. It's more like September, late September, probably. Anybody else? Ken? Yeah. Uh, one, one final comment and question. Uh, so I think. You, you heard Trustees Ryan's questions and trying to get to whether or not aquatics is possible 
the town in this space. And, and I, I hear your, your position of trying to get residents in and, and making sure that you can give uh, the uh, property the amenities it needs. Is there any way we can make this a dual use pool that serves for everybody? You know, I, I'd, I'd like to entertain that, but just having talked to our financing partners and everybody else on the residential side, I, the answer is no. They, they, it, the, the residential uses need a private residential amenity like that, and having it shared with public just from a management standpoint is a problem, and from a financing and leasability standpoint is a problem. So. And what if it's the town that operates it instead of the... Well, then you don't have a private amenity, and that's that's equally a problem for this for a scale of project of this scale. So, so are there alternative amenities that could be substituted for a pool that would still meet the criteria? No. Worth noting that the residents in this apartment complex will have access to our pools. As members of the public, yeah. I mean, I, of course. It's, I understand. It's... I just, I, <laughs> there is an of course, but, you know, the... the the tone of the residents here don't want a shared use with the rest of the community. The rest of the community is welcoming these residents in, and they may use our pools. Of course, if so if, if you go, exact, I don't think that came across exactly as intended. But that's no, no, no mean feelings intended. If you I, go look at any 350 residential unit project, it will have a private pool that is not open to the public. And that's, and, I, that's and I'm not disputing necessary. that. I'm just <clears throat> am wondering about the location. So, and because once there's, you know, the, the commodity, the, the highest value commodity in this is space. And, you know, once this space is full, there's, you know, we can't then plop in a, a community amenity, an amenity for the entire community, right? So I think these are all good questions around, mm. are there other, Okay, you have to have a gym and aquatic amenity for the 350 residents. Is there any other location so that the rooftop of the garage is available or we could push the 9,000 square feet to something more? As, as part of this project, no. Um, you know, like we talked about earlier, the, the obligation for the civic space is really RC Superior's obligation, not Morgan Ranch's obligation. We could, you know, if you if you want it bigger or you want it somewhere else, we can certainly not include it in the Morgan Ranch boundary, which is under contract, and include it either in the parks or on Block 5 or Block 2 or Block 8. Um, RC Superior can do that. It's, you know, it, it, it dedicates additional space, um, which, which, you know, hurts RC Superior a little bit um, because it can't count that land as, as contributable value. But and the $10 we can million consider that. Is the $10 million depreciates every day, right? So yeah, as prices part, go up, sure. Right. So a big part of what we're trying to do is bring this amenity as soon as right. possible in line with. And I think this is the way to do that. I mean, that's why, well, you know, that's the benefit of us being involved in both sides is trying to <coughs> broker a deal that works equally for Morgan Ranch, for RC Superior and for the town. And so there's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a delicate situation, of course, but I, you know, we're, we're doing our best and trying to find a way that we can deliver this as quickly as possible. I agree with you. We're going to start construction on this larger project in January. To have this be a part of that is the fastest way to deliver this space for you. Um, you know, we, we just need to make sure that it's feasible from all sides of the aisle. And I would like to just as, you know, before we break, um, maybe a brainstorm or if there's any uses we haven't talked about yet. I mean, we talked a little bit about a kitchen, a straw boat, do we want a kitchen or not? <laughs> some, some big sort of programming input like that as a group would be helpful so that we can bring you something next time that has what you want it to have. Right, you know, right, right now we have a big open flexible space. We'll add storage. Um, I'd like to know if you want me to add a kitchen or not. We, we will add the deck and try to get some mountain views. Um, we'll look at those stairs and the orientation of the stairs. Uh, is there anything else that we've, if there's any other programming ideas or things that you want this space to do aside from make it bigger, um, now's the time. So the space is definitely smaller than I think we had initially contemplated, but I still would love to see some sort of flexible walls included. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think you're right on that. Having a big, 5,000 feet is actually a pretty big space if you're gonna have, but most of the public meetings I've been to have been sort of 30 to 40 people. I think you hit on it with the co-work space. I think yeah, that's, that's good. You know, obviously with, you know, who we're trying to, to draw here, 
um, the kitchen because of the location I think is something that's absolutely required. We want to be able to host some events. I don't think it's going to be a commercial grade kitchen, but having the opportunity for somebody to yeah, do you think it's like a chef's kitchen that's open for demonstrations, or is it like a commercial kitchen that's like buried just to provide food service? I, I, warming kitchen. Warming kitchen. You're, you're talking about so if, if we had a caterer come in some right. somewhere to stage or not prepare, not right. not not where you're actually yes, you're just no. I don't see this kitchen. as a demonstration yeah. type yeah. kitchen. I do think um, in the demonstration, but I do think this is somewhere where so indoor outdoor that for absolutely for me those doors need to go away. And, and I, I know there's big expenses there. You know, garage doors are one option, sliding doors are another option, but having something, we're fortunate that we have 300 days of sunshine and it's gonna be right outside the plaza, so let's take advantage of that. Um, and uh, it should absolutely be open and aesthetically appealing so art can be displayed. I see this as somewhere where it's not only co-work, but it's also somewhere where our local artists are have the opportunity to display their their work. I'll agree with that, and again, just echo a wraparound deck on the top. We talked about getting mountain views on the side of that building, which just make a larger wraparound. That way, we can activate more space. Um, I I would again. Bill, I, I heard your answer. I, I'd like to push you one more time to go back and, and see if we can challenge some of the assumptions in, in talking about the pool area. Uh, even though that pool would, in theory, be open to the public, it's not open to all the public. Our, our superior pools are only open to superior residents. So you still have to have that magic, I live in superior car to, to, <laughs> to live there. And this would be the third pool. So we're not all of a sudden going to see every single person in superior showing up to this pool. Um, it's still going to be in the proximity of all of these folks. There's nothing saying they can't go in and use it. It's still going to be a huge benefit to them. But all of a sudden, this adds so much more value to the town. If we can somehow challenge that, if we can start talking about the economics of how that happens, that's a conversation I would like to hear and I'd like to have. Because uh, I'm also concerned about the number of residents coming in here and all of a sudden we're, our pools are beyond capacity. So if, if we could talk about it, a pool that can be used by everyone. Everyone's welcome to come rent a gorgeous apartment and have access to the pool. Of course. <laughs> no, we, we will we'll think about it and I'll and I'll continue to talk to the team about it. Um, you know, maybe there's some sort of a joint use thing that's still controlled with a limited number. I, yeah, I don't. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll I will pursue it um, in good faith and see what we can do. But you know, we don't make all the decisions. Or we have need to get this financed and we need to you know may have it be a successful operating project too. So I'll, I'll do my best. Do, do we have an idea how many, you know, if we had a, an event where, where people were, were sitting up rows of chairs and just in a speaking event, um, how many people we could actually fit on a floor so that is 45? What, what's the auditorium occupancy? Like 100 square feet or how, how many square feet per person? 15. Oh, 15 square feet per person. So in a 45,000, what's 45,000? 4,500 divided by 15. We're doing a lot of math in this meeting. That's about 300 people on 4,500 square feet. That's the second floor? Yeah. So potentially 500 on the, the first floor? Yeah, well, that was, uh, just 4,500 square feet, which are oh, those 40? Yeah. No. So that, that was actually first, first floor. So this 4,500 square feet is roughly 300 people. Okay, that's three. Up here, 2650 would be so half of that. There you Yeah. I know you're, so when you take back, when you go through notes and look at all this, I think hearing the, you know, taking off the residential lease in office or potentially the residential fitness, you may not be willing to compromise that. You do have access to a unit on the kind of northwest side. So maybe cannibalizing some of that unit for a kitchen on the first floor in particular. So on the northwest side, go just north of the stair. What's there? This is utility rooms connect. There's there's um, transformers and ut electric utilities out here that come so into the building. Move here. that west by 40 feet. We'll, we'll get you as much space as we can. We'll, we'll, okay. we'll look into making it um, bigger if we can and, and look at adding a warming kitchen 
Would you like the warming kitchen on the first floor or the second floor, or do you care? My instincts are, I don't, you guys are the experts here, right? Yeah. But my instincts are the first floor is better just because I see it coming more outside into the uh, space as well, and asking people to come downstairs with trays and stuff feels mm -hmm. hard, so my instincts are on the first floor. But and, and, and on the second floor, you know, as we're looking at it, we. We have this terrace, which is, you know, and this pre-function, which is eating up a lot of this. Otherwise, you know, this, this could be 4,500 square feet up here, too. Um, if you wanted to have more space on the second floor, you know, especially if we start looking at more of the roll-up doors and the indoor-outdoor things, this part, some of this terrace could become actually indoor usable space that just opens up to the exterior. And so you end up with a larger function area that's, that's again, a little more flexible because instead of having a true outdoor terrace, make it more... Bring, bring this wall down potentially, make, make a smaller terrace, if any, and just have these, open, these windows open so the whole thing is a terrace when you have the windows open, right? Um, if you want more, I mean, that's, that's a way to accomplish more space, again, without you know, necessarily having to find more space. So also with regard to the kitchen, I'd be curious what others think. I would love if the kitchen were on one end, had the flexible walls where it could be blocked off but I think for a lot of things, we could be using that space rather than having a dedicated, mm -hmm. this is only the kitchen and mm -hmm. we can't go in there. Are others okay with that? Like if it's kind of on the end of a room rather than a se an entirely separate area? Yeah, that, that's why I was thinking either cannibalizing a bit in the residential leasing or cannibalizing where they currently have some of the, uh, some of the equipment up there. But yeah, I agree. It's sort of tucked in a corner that's not it's not in the middle. Well, and it's not a separate room that's blocked off. Right. But it's you're saying you could have a kitchen like a long, just a long counter along this that has everything you yeah, need, but there, there can be a wall up against it most of the time, right. so you're not losing that space. I, exactly. I think that's a great idea. If we can, I, I guess my, my I don't know if there's any code issues with that. For this is, you know, I, I trust the architects to, to design things in, in a manner that makes sense, but generally speaking, 4,500 square feet is not a big space. No. And it is quickly going to become a small space the more kitchens and bathrooms yeah. get thrown in there. So to the extent that we can preserve a clean 4,500 square foot box, or as, much as, we can. as much as we possibly can, we should. Um, and if that means that, you know, because I mean, how often are, I mean, I, I don't know, right? Um, nobody knows been built and we don't know what it's going to be used for but uh, I think that this space is going to be used for and not necessarily need needing a kitchen 90% of the time 10% of the time it's going to need a kitchen and it's going to be great that we have one but 90% of the time we're not going to need a kitchen so you know from a design for a purpose you don't want to necessarily design with a kitchen being as a paramount kind of focus of the design if you're not necessarily using it all the time. That's my kind of gut reaction. Like what we really need is space for everybody to gather. I do want to open this up to the public. I know we have a couple sure. members of the public here. If anybody has any public comment, they'd like to- I want to add one comment. Oh, sorry. Um, you know, and I know we're going to throw a whole bunch of stuff at you and you have to try to, you know, shake and rattle and figure out how to incorporate six disparate <laughs> views on, on how to use a space and, you know, have fun. Um, you know, because I, I, I differ with my colleague, you know, Ken, and, and I don't necessarily see the value of a pool here. I see an opportunity for, you know, um, shared collaborative space with respect to the library facilities or, you know, call it teen, senior type. Um, facilities. We don't have anything like that. Uh, the Louisville Library, um, they've got a little teen loft. I think it's probably about, you know, a thousand square feet. Uh, but it, it's jam-packed with teenagers. We have no senior facilities in this town whatsoever. Um, I'd like to see us, you know, tapping into that somehow. Um, you know, pool, don't get me wrong, definitely a, a quality attribute, but it's used four months of the year. You know, an indoor, you know, I don't know where it goes, but I think that the message you're hearing from all of us is, at least for me specifically, take the, the dollar constraint off and see what we can do about you know, bringing more square feet into this and then incorporating some of the additional <laughs> con, uh, the additional attributes that we've thrown at you. 
So taking the, and is that for a academic exercise or are you actually thinking the town will fund some part of the gap out of general fund or what's the, what's, what, I, I'm not gonna be able to fund any more of it out of private dollars. So I, I wanna be clear about that. <laughs> Our interpretation and based on that, uh, definition, which does reference the section 15 in Exhibit B, which talks about all the parks, is that we have $10 million to build all the park, to build Central Park, no, sorry, $10 million to build Village Green, Parks 1 and 2, 20% of Central Park, and whatever you want to allocate here. So if there's, if we're adding a million dollars here, we have to take a million dollars out of one of the parks. And that's fine, but I want you to <laughs> understand that. Um, you know, there's, there's not just an unlimited budget here. No, I, I completely understand, but up until now, I'd never even realized what parks and one and two were on the drawing board as, right? So, sure. you know, I think the first I'm hearing of that is you got a two to $3 million design constraint, which I want to understand what we can do to remove the constraints across the board. You know, what, what's in the parks one and two design that's consuming so much cash that we can potentially, you know, spread things around a little bit. Yeah, and we, you know, I'd be happy to get involved with a design. So there was an FTP approved on parks one and two a year and a half ago, um, which is the basis of design for all of those costs and everything. Um, I think that is an important part of, of this, and I want it to be an important part of this because it, it, it really is to look at those parks in a separate design session, look at the costs, say, where are we spending these dollars and understand Again, I'm fine if you want to spend uh, whatever it is, six on the park and three on this, fine. If you want to spend three on the park and six on this, fine within limits. You know, at some point, again, it's, it's eating into private development area, which becomes a problem for the deal between Morgan Ranch and downtown Superior and, and RC Superior. Um, but we'll work with you on whatever you want to do. I think the park is an important piece that we need to understand the budget yep, there. No, I completely agree. And, and what, that, what that means here. Yep. Um, but we will, that, that said, we will look at opportunities to where, where we can grow, if we can grow, and how to potentially reorganize some of the space, you know, along the, what everyone said tonight. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Anything else from the board? Public. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. I do want to open it up to public comment. If anybody from the public has a comment they'd like to make, please come up to the podium. If you just identify yourself for the record. Yeah, my name is Rachel Tittle, and we will be um, residents of the downtown area in the next month or so. Um, I would love, love to see a library in this space. I think that it is a huge draw for community members of all ages. I think it can be a great place for teenagers to be positively engaged, and I think that it would be just a huge asset in this downtown area. It also draws people to the area, so if you're there, you know, you can sit down and work on your computer. It can be a great place for students, um, learning-wise, of all ages. You could go and grab a cup of coffee, you're already there. So I think it can be really engaging on a bunch of different levels, so. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Um, Ms. Tuttle, sorry, just wanted to ask, as you're talking about the amenities that a library would include, yes. it sounds like a lot of those are things we're considering for this community space, mm -hmm. but not necessarily with the books and the checkouts there. Um, okay. Would that still appeal to you, or is it really important to you to have the actual? I think it's both. So okay. for myself, I have a six-year-old son, and he absolutely adores the library. I know tons of other families going there, getting books. It's like a huge thing. It's a very easy way to get out and be around other people within the neighborhood, um, see the same faces. I think that having the like events within the library, whether it's like a kid's story time or uh, yoga, for example, something that's really accessible for everyone. Something on, like you were saying, um, like a balcony that could really give access to views for everyone instead of just a set number of people would be really well received, I would think. So maybe to clarify my question, mm -hmm. if we had all of those activities and like the public space in a coffee shop and that sort of thing, would that appeal even if it didn't have actual library services and books? I'm really drawn to the library services. Okay. I think I they're love the a library huge asset. Well, so yeah, and I think, it. you know, I've I've seen so many people at the Louisville Library. It's constantly packed. The story time is just a huge draw, and that is something I think Superior really needs. Okay, so thank you and welcome mm -hmm. to the neighborhood. Thank you. Okay, any other public comment? 
I just wanted to thank Ryan Morgan for attending tonight, and I didn't know if you had any comments you wanted to make to the board or anything you wanted to say. So, I put you on the spot. I'm sorry, but if not, that's fine too. Just wanted to say thanks for coming tonight. We'll see you soon. Yeah. And Bill, Ryan, and the group, uh, <laughs> Rachel Terry, um, KTGY, um, thank you for, for coming tonight. I think this is a step in the right direction. Do you guys have the, the direction you need now to, to going to go forward and finalize the plans for the FTP? Questions. More questions than answers, more answers than questions? Oh, could you come out to the podium, please? My uh, last big question would just be, Rachel Keevan, the KTGY group, um, is what size of an event are you really wanting to host? Because I think that really drives, I mean, that drives how much storage we need, how big the space is, how many bathrooms we need. It really all kind of comes back to how big of a space that you really want to have. As big as possible. <laughs> I get that, <laughs> but 500 versus 250 is... Okay. No, really. Matt, what have we been very big for the uh, state of Superior event? It's a little over 100, 120. And, and has that been our largest, I mean, outside of like Chili Fest and Pancake? What about the volunteer? Thank you. Appreciation dinner? Yes. That was at 125, I think, this year. So adding room for growth, 150 minimum, closer to 200, the best. Yeah, and I think realistically those are kind of constrained because of the spaces we're in. So I think if we had a bigger space, they probably would be bigger. I think if we had room for 250 or 300, we would something we would fill it. We would okay. use it. We would be thankful yeah. that we had it. Particularly because today without the space, we're using it in the off hours when a lot of people can't attend. Whereas once yeah. we have dedicated space, we do it at a prime time and more events and mm -hmm. everything. I, Terry Willis with KTGY. I just wanted to say that, um, you know, I guess it's been 15 years ago or so, or maybe more, that uh, I managed the design of the St. Julian Hotel. And just to, just for a scale standpoint, that is about a 10,000 foot, less than a 10,000 foot facility that, you know, all that meeting space, um, about, I think less than 5,000, around 5,000 feet is the, the grand ballroom within that space. So just to, just wanted to lay that out as a scale reference, assuming that, that you've probably been, been there at some, uh, been to a function there at, at some point. Okay. Thank you. That's helpful. Right. Thank you. Okay. Well, we uh, look forward to seeing the FTP and thank you for, for coming. Thank you. And we'll be adjourned. Thanks. <laughs>